the ripples of a desert dune, the spots on a seashell, the stripes on a zebra. What do all these things have in common? Well, all they have to do with a world-famous mathematician and a curious little rock found only in the Australian outback. We'll return to that question in a moment, but first I want to introduce something that I personally find to be one of the most tantalising mysteries in geology. It's 600 million years old, found only in the East Kimberley, and there is nothing else like it anywhere on Earth. Zebra rock. These weird and wacky patterns have defied scientific explanation for almost a century. Over a dozen theories have been put forward, but as of yet, no consensus has been reached. But what if, this entire time, there's been a clue sitting right under our very noses, a clue right there in the very name itself? Zebra rock. Zebras. How does a zebra get its stripes? For that matter, a shell its spots, or a desert its dunes. The answer to all these things is the same. Turing patterns. Turing patterns are named after the discoverer, Sir Alan Turing, legendary mathematician, who first reported them in 1952 in his seminal paper. In this paper, he described the interaction of positive and negative feedback mechanisms that combine in such a way as to create a wide and varied array of patterns. Patterns that closely resemble those that we see in Zepparok. To better explain the process, imagine, if you will, an endless desert, flat except for some seashells poking up from beneath the sand. As the wind blows, sand accumulates against the side of these shells, creating first a mound and then a dune. As the dune grows larger, it captures even more and more sand and thus can grow faster and faster. This is an example of positive feedback. Now consider what is behind the dune. As the wind blows, the dune creates a wind shadow, preventing any deposition of sand immediately behind it and stopping any dune from growing there. This is an example of negative feedback. Together, these feedback systems combine in such a way as to create the ripple patterns that we see in sand dunes. A similar process just may have occurred in zebra rock, only with ions and molecules in place of sand. In my research, I'm modeling different geochemical systems in order to assess their potential for forming Turing patterns and determining if these patterns match those that we see in Zepparok. It's hoped that by doing this, I might finally solve a 600 million year old mystery and answer once and for all the question, just how did the Zepparok get its stripes?